Ladies and gentlemen, I don't like no motherless child, but I don't know what, you know, Darian is feeling, but he gonna be okay. He went to country, and so he gonna be alright. He actually is pretty good with his country, so he gonna be alright. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we got my boy, Rick James, and he's doing Ebony and them eyes. Okay? Ebony eyes. Rick James, everybody. I'm Rick James. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, guess what we're going to do? We're going to turn the music off. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the music off. I know I know you want to listen to Ebony Eyes, but you got to listen to the contract. Because you know what I figured? I can do the proofreading now on video so that I can tell you what we're doing. Now, the first part, this part right here we highlighted, we're going to leave that the way it is. Okay? Claim of alleged criminal conduct, mortgage fraud, conspiracy and misrepresentations to achieve unjust enrichment, and a formal dispute of debt claim challenge. Alleged mortgage fraud felony complaint form. Now, the reason why we put this in the corner, so that nobody can claim that they didn't understand what we were attempting to accomplish. Because that's the first thing, that, well, we don't know what you're trying to do. I mean, it seems like you're trying to do this, but then it doesn't seem like you're trying to do that. So what are you trying to do? Can you tell us? Uh, my name is Michael, and I, 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 you know, I just don't understand what you're trying to do. So can you help me? I, I, no, I'm just a public servant. I can't sit up here and do that. What are you asking? You follow me? They whine more than anything else. Because when they get the job, they sit on their anuses all day and do nothing. I worked from, <laughs> I promise you, 16 years old, and I'm at the county building. And all of the adults, I'm the youngest person in there. Okay, everybody else is 28, 30, and my supervisor, she's in her 50s, 60s. Okay, so I'm the youngest person in there. And I'm getting things done because that was what I did. Get it done quick. Get it out of the way. Your mama. Anyway, that was what I did. I got things. I'm efficiency. I'm the efficiency expert. That's what people called me the whole time I've been working. That's been the name and the title. Getting things done in the most efficient way possible. So I did that. And I got yelled at. I got pulled to the side so many times. What are you doing? You don't go home until 4 o'clock. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? You got until 4 o'clock to do your job. Yeah, but if I get it all done now, no, nah, because they ain't going to let you just sit around. That's fine. Then that means I can pick up on the stuff that I have to do tomorrow. That means I can get ahead of things. <laughs> and they would tell me, you don't understand it, do you? That's not how things work around here. And so they taught me how to take my time. And drag my feet and just sit around and do nothing. Yeah, that was the job. And I couldn't stand that. So I was of the mindset like many of my other supervisors when I went to other places. Hey, 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 don't just be sitting around doing nothing. Always find something to do. Don't just be doing nothing because it doesn't look good. The public see you doing nothing, then they will think that you don't do your job, and they will think that we're all like that. So, no, you got to be doing something. That was the rule. Mandatory participation, mandatory contribution at our organization. We don't people just sitting around doing nothing. So I want you guys to sit around and do nothing for now. Just listen, okay? That means we're doing something. We'll just do it anyway. I brought this, I put it in my browser. I was going to, let me go ahead and shut that off because it might actually interfere. Where are you at? Uh, naturally, Natural Reader. I, I opened Natural Reader because I was going to have Natural Reader do it, but then I said, no, why not just open the PDF with the browser? Let people see how the PDF is going to look. This is how the PDF was going to look, y'all. Well, that ain't how it's going to look because I can't see nothing because it's uh, the video overlay. But this is how it's going to look, and I definitely, we're not going to do the whole document because I ain't got that type of energy tonight. We just had a meeting, and I just told them we're only going to go so far with the meeting because why? Because I didn't want to, I know they've had a long week, and I'm not going to take up their time. So this is the verification validation of complaint 
section. I do hereby ascribe, affirm, attest, declare, as well as acknowledge that the aforementioned information is based on first-hand information and or facts and or conclusions. Now, see, that conclusion area laws? No. Conclusionary laws is what that's supposed to say. So I got to correct that. So while it's reading that, we're going to have this one up. Okay. Uh oh, we won't even have this one up looking the way it is. So let me go ahead and take care of conclusionary now. Conclusionary, is that really a word? Look, dude. Go sit down. Or go do something. What you mean don't be telling you go sit down? Boy, do you know <sighs> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Alright. What's gonna happen is with the like I said, I do have to proofread it. Come on. No, we don't want exclusionary. We want conclusionary laws by not only Congress of several states and the United States. And it's supposed to be of these several states. Also of the United States. Okay. And then See, what, what this is saying is that these are not my words. These are what I have first-hand knowledge of. These are case laws that I've reviewed showing me what the courts have agreed upon. This is, it's called judicial knowledge. So people want to have a judge take judicial notice. You don't need to have them take judicial notice. It is judicial knowledge that you should know this stuff. So shut the that's what it's saying. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the rendering. Now this, I would get some popcorn because it's going to take a while, okay? No, it's not. Uh, there will be some sections that we will skip. But for the most part, oh, I was just showing my people about ZDSoft. This is the, see right here? Yep, that's it right there. That's what I use to record the screen. Simple program. Hey, look at a high performance, lag free screen recording where it doesn't la 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 lag. All right. Let's get rid of you. We don't need you. And then we minimize you. And we got to go to the one where we have the mortgage. This one. And we're going to let it play. Oh, my bad. I started it too late. I have to go up to the top. Whew. That could have been horrible. I believe that the statute defines mortgage fraud in part as. Come on, keep going. I think she wants me to be on the same screen. I don't think she wants to be. Oh, no, she's she trying to read. Come on, girl. Not only ma making any deliberate misstatement misrepresentation or omission during the mortgage lending process with the intent that the misstatement misrepresentation or omission be relied on by a mortgage lender borrower or any other party to the mortgage lending process and i believe that the parties listed herein other than the claimant are alleged to have committed such cognizable criminal offenses against my person my property my interest the interest of the american people as well as the american government and due to financial entanglement, the courts, in an effort to protect their CRIS interest financial gains program, have given these and other conspirators a pass, and I object. As government has an obligatory duty to respond in substance, I present my complaint for criminal redress of wrongs done my person and interest Bernard V. Kalage, 17F, SUP, 2D. Sorry. 
1311, SD Flaw 1998. The clear policy advanced by the Fifth Circuit is that although plaintiffs have a responsibility to initially attempt to comply with administrative requirements, the government is. It's obligated. Come on now. Also under an obligation to communicate with claimants and investigate claims in good faith. CID at 250, distinguishing by Alois v. United States, 443 F.2 D. 1047, 3 DCIR 1971, State v. Hogan, 336 NJ Super. 319, NJ Super, 2001, State and as a member of the executive branch, is ultimately answerable to the people. That is not to suggest that the Attorney General may denigrate, or act in derogation of individual rights, to satisfy public opinion, or for political considerations. But Ladies. the Attorney General owes the duty to respond to the legitimate concerns of the citizenry. Ladies and gentlemen. Date. This is their words. Name of claimant account number. S. Address of claimant. Associated property addresses if different from above. What type of loan secured whereby loan was originally approved with down payment and collateral listings an unsecured loan? where the loan was approved based on your credit rating and employment history a money mortgage loan, otherwise known as a second mortgage, or an equity line of credit a hard money loan other please explain in the section titled an unsecured loan signifies. List the name of the offenders and any identifying information to help locate and aid in the investigation please note that if you need additional space, you may add additional pages. We're going to stop just for a second. I want you guys to listen to her read all of this. Now, if it does not sound professional, then y'all going to have to tell me something. Because I don't hear anything that sounds like gobbledygook or something that sounds like it's just some bunch of paperwork put together or a bunch of words put together. I hear explanations and things being stated that either it is this or either it is that. So we're going to let her continue, okay? Come on, child. Get on with the getting on. I don't know if she's going to read this or go to the next one. So I got to wait. Please take no notice of the following. The information I report on this form may be used to help with the investigation of the alleged violations of state and federal laws. The completed, mailed or faxed form and supporting documents being sent to one of the Office of Government. Upon receipt of my complaint, it must be reviewed by a member of your staff, assigned a file number, and properly logged for recordation she's, purposes. She's reading this. The <coughs> length of this process, depending on the circumstances and information I provided with my complaint, might not take greater than necessary, or 75 days. The Attorney General's office may contact us yet only if additional information is needed, may not use any of this information to harass, investigate, threaten, and or intimidate the witnesses as such as a violation of law and presumed witness tampering. Can't threaten a witness and you're doing an affidavit so you're saying you witnessed all of this. Can't threaten a witness. Come on now. This is a criminal this allegation. This is a criminal allegation complaint and not a claim for tort as deprivations of rights while acting under color and of authority of law if said to be a crime of felony the bank, the deed of trust trustee, and the escrow trustee have failed to provide a copy of the purchase agreement as requested and required by law. This denies me the right to access to only property, but to defend my right to property, and I do object because such is a violation of law, in particular the right the contract. An unsecured loan signifies that the collateral used by the bank to justify the purchase of the home was the home being purchased of which you were not the owner of record prior to the purchase and the legal owner did not offer to co-sign for you to purchase the property and or use their property as collateral prior to your becoming the owner. Please explain in detail. Are you challenging the misapplication of law and or statute? 
That's the next step. Such as dealings with the lender or servicer, making payments, getting information about your loan, managing your account, getting an accounting of all payments, interests, stocks, cusips, and or securities, and or proof of debt via verification of disputed debt requests. In other words, have you asked for information and or records that you feel you are entitled and were either ignored and or your requests were refused? Please explain. Now, the Enter the date of the alleged mortgage. That's that right there. They're going to read right here. If you believe that the alleged mortgage was improper and that the lender misrepresented the fact that to qualify no collateral was needed other than your down payment, please explain the timeline in concise statements. That just requires you to explain, hey, did you know or were you told by the lender collateral. the following? You may have to manually check each box applicable after printing. So you may have to check each one of these manually. If you knew, check this box. If the lender failed to inform you, check this box. If the realtor failed to inform you, check this box. If the escrow trustee failed to inform you, check this box. That a deed of trust is classified as a trust if it has all of the elements of a trust. That your loan had been approved prior to closing. And that they had paid the seller of the home. That after funding this constituted ownership of the property as it was paid for by you. That you had the right to take immediate ownership upon funding of the account. That you were not a party to a secured loan, as the home could not be collateral as was documented, for the owner of the collateral had not authorized such. That the bank was lending its credit and that there is no proof of actual monies changing hands, just the transfer of credits? Did the realtor and or the box representatives inform you that all property in the United States is owned by the state and that any so-called ownership is superficial? Did the bank's representative explain that Federal Reserve notes have no value and that this has been the case since 1933? Were you informed that if the bank lent Federal Reserve notes that are officially valueless, that this constitutes a void agreement whereby the by contract law or do nothing of value? <laughs> it's supposed to be value. <laughs> that we are as a country if a national emergency, and as such we are in a banking holiday? That you as a member of the people of a state of the United States are a member of the public, and as such you have an interest in the full faith and credit of the United States and can pledge part of that interest to offset your reasonable debts? That the public debt, the debts of the American people are obligations of the American government and therefore dischargeable? Please detail the nature of your complaint against the individual, business, or provider include the who, what, where, when, and why of your complaint full explanation of the transaction involved and a chronology of the events. You may use additional sheets if necessary. My statement of claim of complaint is list and attach photocopies of any relevant documents, agreements, correspondence, or receipts that support your complaint. Examples include proof of deposits, bank in, Formation, wire transfers, any realtor, broker, property, escrow instructions, loan files, billing statements, correspondence, receipts, payment information, witnesses, In words, and any other document which explains or supports the matters raised in the complaint. And then attach it. No originals. Copy both sides of any cancelled checks that pertain to this complaint. I further believe that the United States courts that I will place an indicator applicable to each question. Did the trustee know this? Did the lender know this? Did the servicer know this? Is everyone deemed to know this information? If you notified by any of the actors of their alleged fraudulent activities prior to today's date indicate below. 
Mortgage Fraud Protection Acts broadly states that a person, corporation, agent, officer. Hold on. Let me pause y'all. I'll be right back. Okay, I noticed some typos and some correction that needed to be done, such as I further believe that the United States courts are aware of that. I will place an indicator applicable to each question. Okay, that the trustees don't do this, the trustees don't do that. Mortgage Fraud Protection Act broadly states that a person, corporation, or agent may not commit mortgage fraud. This is what they say already in their case law. All of the case laws associated with this are in the other section right after this. Uh, sorry, this right here definitely got to correct. That ain't supposed to be like that. FI comprehensive, that's got to be corrected. Oh, okay, it wasn't that way. That's one of them over things. See, it's showing FI. That ain't the FI ain't supposed to be there, but that's gonna correct itself. Let me let the lady start talking again, cause she she sound like she in a hurry. See now she taking her time. I don't understand it. First she in a hurry. Officer she... may not commit mortgage fraud. The FBI is committed to aggressively pursuing those who endanger the stability of consumer confidence. In financial institution fraud (FIF) investigations, the Bureau continues to concentrate its efforts on organized criminal groups that prey on consumers. The FBI prioritizes cases with significant community impact. Financial institution fraud (FIF) is the class of criminal schemes targeting traditional consumers. Many FIF schemes involve the compromise of customers' accounts or personal identifying information PII. when identities are stolen, both the financial institution and customers are considered victims. This is taken directly from the IRS website. I mean, FIF FBI can be categorized website. as either external, when perpetrators have no affiliation with the victim's institution, or internal, when bank employees use their access to accounts and systems and knowledge of policies to commit fraud. Like what Wells Fargo did. Mortgage fraud are crimes characterized by some type of material misstatement, misrepresentation, or omission in relation to a consumer, which is then relied upon by a consumer seeking a loan from a financial institution. A lie that influences a consumer's decision about whether, for example, to accept a loan or agree to certain misrepresented payment terms is mortgage fraud. The following facts are agreed by the judicial branch, the legislative branch, and administrative branches of government. Do you agree that these branches of government and their agencies must follow these principles of established laws? Check all that apply. Government agree, officials uh, have a duty to links. respond to complainants. A yeah, she's going to read the HTTPs. HTT. Yeah, I don't want her to read the HTTPs. All right, let me let me go ahead and skip this. Matter of fact, I don't need her to read this from now on. We gonna read it together, okay? All right. The following facts are agreed by the judicial branch, legislative branch, and the administrative branches of government. Do you agree that these branches of government and their agencies must follow these principles of established laws? Check all that apply. Government officials have a duty to respond to complainants such as yourself. The fact that a party executes a deed of trust is no evidence that that party has an interest in the property. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody can sign a deed of trust. Doesn't mean that they own the property. That's not proof by itself. A plea, uh, let's, I don't want a plea because plea means submitting to the court's jurisdiction. A petition to quiet title does not require any particular element, but each party must plead and prove his or her own claim to the property in question. 
and the plaintiff's right to relief, therefore, depends on the superiority of the title. The mortgage agreement fails for want of consideration. These are the case laws. Everything that's being stated here, this is thousands of cases associated with these cases that agree with the same. All courts of the United States are bound by the decisions of the Supreme Court of the United States. And let's put that of America. Okay. Ah, capital T. Can't have a lowercase t right there. Got to be capital. The elements of broken chain of title invalidates right to foreclose. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is a broken chain of title, that means that they must justify, must explain, they can't just foreclose. So that's what that says, and the courts agree. These are not statements by me. This is what the courts are saying. That's why we went to those sites. The court lacks jurisdiction to entertain a foreclosure due to the fact that the loan is unsecured. Okay? Not under the Foreclosure Act. And let's, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, under the Foreclosure Act, the courts lack the jurisdiction to foreclose. Okay, just that simple, because the Foreclosure Act only refers to secured debt. That's why they allow them to go through a 45-day process, because they say they got a secured debt. These were the attorneys and the banks going to them and trying to get Congress to quit Quick, 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 get him out of here. Okay, next, please. Non judicial foreclosure. Give him my capital N. We can't have no low on my case of my N at the beginning of no thinking. They, they just ain't. Non judicial foreclosure. Not authorized under the Foreclosure Act. On an unsecured loan. These are the cases that talk about whether or not they can do a non judicial foreclosure on an unsecured loan. They cannot. They must go through a lawsuit. Go ahead. Read the cases. Copy and paste. Start with HTTP and go all the way to the end of the line. Copy and paste. Or actually, no. These, when you get it, you'll be able to click on the links. Let's do that. Let's show you. Okay, this is a link. Uh-oh. Yeah, you know why I can't click on it? Because I'm reading it as a PDF and not as the PDF. So I just pulled it up in there as opposed to downloading it from there. So these links are there. All right. The constitutional exemption affords the private property. Afforded the private property. The, the, okay. The constitutional exemption afforded to private property from forced sale in satisfaction of a general debt which is an unsecured loan is absolute that's what general debt means an unsecured loan is a general debt general that's why it's common household goods consumer household goods okay the trust deeds language because of how the trust deed is written fulfills all the criteria necessary to create a trust. You are creating a trust. I was not creating anything other than a trust. I was not establishing a mortgage. Pay attention. I was not creating a trust. I was not establishing a mortgage because they told me I didn't have to put down any collateral. I was establishing a trust. And they are in breach. Booyah! Under Article 9... A security interest does not arise until the debtor has signed an agreement describing the collateral. The value has been given and the debtor has acquired rights to the collateral. Courts have held that a debtor's right to the collateral. Let's capitalize this because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is actually continuing from the same case. 
Uh oh. Oh, I did put the case there. Whew. I, I thought, wait a minute, didn't I put the case? But we didn't put the link. We put the actual case that talks about Article 9. The courts have held that a debtor's right to the collateral. Oh, that's right, because it was going to be too long. When I, if I had put the link here, it would have been too long and we wouldn't have been able to add this. So that's why that was. I forgot about this one. The courts have held that a debtor's rights in the collateral may be found from any rights going beyond mere possession. No such right to collateral exists in the instant matter. That's you saying that. So we're going to do this right here. And then we're going to make it so it's your statement. All right. Now we go to the next one. Prior to acquiring the loan, the borrower is not by law classified as a debtor. A debtor may pledge security in the property that it does not fully own, but may only pledge the rights that it has in the property. Really? Well, if you're just buying the property, you don't have no rights. A security interest does not arise unless the debtor has signed that agreement. Okay? Containing a description of the collateral. Value has been given that they've give, been giving you some value. You can't just have me sign the agreement unless you give me the loan. You ain't gave me the loan. I'm signing the agreement. Where's the loan at? Well, you're going to find that the loan has already been funded by the time you do the closing papers. But at the beginning, you don't put down collateral. Go back and look. Okay? The debtor must have rights to the collateral. The debtor must have rights to the collateral. See, as even said, the debtor has rights to the collateral. Okay, debtor must have rights to the collateral before the security interest will attach to the collateral. Must have rights. He who is not the actual owner of the collateral has no right to pledge the collateral. So if you don't own the collateral, you can't pledge the collateral. That's what the, the actual case, all of them say. The security agreement does not authorize sale of collateral except by written consent which was not obtained in this case. So what we do is we do the semi-quote and we do the semi-quote so that this was not obtained is your statement. Okay? Was not authorized to do so by the actual owner of the collateral. That's all we put, was not authorized to do so. The original owner did not give you permission to sign over his stuff as collateral. Can't do it. He ain't allowing. No security agreement due to invalid collateral. There is no security agreement. We're going to put there is. T-H-E-R-E -E is in the I-N-S-T-A-N-T. Man, a T T E R, comma, no security agreement due to invalid collateral. Collateral, collateral. A deed of trust is a trust, as it contains all the elements of a trust. A deed of trust, or the deed follows the debt. Okay, we just went over that. A deed follows the debt. A deed is evidence of a debt has nothing to do with real property. A debt has nothing to do with real property or non-real property. A debt has everything to do with because they made that term real property. That wasn't the law at first. Sitting up here trying to change the facts and the law. No, no, what's wrong with these people? All right. Further, all of his actions since executing a deed is consistent with the fact that a trust was intended. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to, this right here, that's what I'm trying to do. Nope, not trying to do that much. Yeah. Oh, I see. I can't do that. Because the more I brought that up, the more it changed that. So I got to undo that. There we go. Whew, can't touch that. MC Hammer time. Fact. In the United States of America, the right to ownership of property is a secured one. Everyone in the United States of America, that should be America. Oh, there's something wrong. Something wrong. Got to make that smaller.
got to go here. Hold on. Give me a second to find out what's going on. That's what I'm looking for. You guys probably saw that everything was there, but on my screen, I was missing a lot of words. And so I wanted to make sure that everything was supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. So everyone in the United States of America has the right to obtain and own property and to be secure in a person's property effects and such as secure these persons, those rights, under the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. And we put our comma, uh-oh, wrong one, comma. Is it not? Okay, then we have another fact. Now, all I'm saying are the facts. Everybody knows that in America, everybody has the right to own property. That's all I'm saying, all I'm saying. Now, that's what I'm saying, Your Honor. I'm just saying everybody got that right, mother, okay that America is currently in the midst of a economic national emergency banking holiday. Did the president not declare an economic national emergency in 1933, otherwise known as the Trading with the Enemy Act, March 9, 1933 Act? To aid in our investigate in your investigation, I am incorporating excerpts from that proclamation, 2039 and the location where the intentions of Congress in support of the President's actions document the ongoing nature of the declared emergency of which neither the act nor the proclamations has been repealed. Fact, the current national banking holiday. We don't need to read that. We corrected that and went over that. That's just an actual quote from the actual March 9, 1933 act. I mean, uh, the actual proclamation. Okay, so that's why I ain't going to be going and reading all of it because it's already read. I did it earlier in a video today. That's how I know what it say, mother, I mean, people. Hold on. Got to go to the, hold on. We got to go to the next section. Oh, I don't want to go too far down. No, don't go no further. Yep, that's what happens when you do that. Give me a second. I got to pull it back up. Sorry, I also took the time to work on a couple other things, but we're here. It would appear, by definition, I qualify as a banking institution. And as such, I am to have the very same access to lawful money as financial institutions under the Positive Law Title 12, as evidenced by Section 114. Is this not correct? I don't know, sir. I can't tell you because that seems like it's gobbledygook gobbledygook, yeah, nonsensical, and uh, frivolous, and, 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 you know, all the other words I can come up with, adjectives, because, you know, an adjective describes action or motion or, you know, something, but y you, you, you describing, I, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button, my fault, my fault, see, I was looking at this earlier, and now I gotta, I gotta do it all over again, one second, now, where was I, Gertrude? Oh, right here, banking institution. Yeah, what I was trying to do is I was trying to show y'all that the president, he said it, as used in this order, the term banking institution shall include all persons. Persons, you are a person engaged in or transacting any form of any other form of banking business. So you fall within that. So you are a banking institution according to the law. It would appear by definition, I qualify as a banking institution. And as such, I have the very same right of access to lawful money as financial institutions under Positive Law Title 12. As evidenced by Section 401, this is not correct. Then why have I never been permitted or allowed to have access to lawful money as other financial institutions are permitted to have access? It appears that I am being denied access due uh access to this due process right that has been approved by the administrative branch of government and acknowledged by the legislative branch of government by enactment of the March 9, 1933 Act. And then it says Senate note and all those things. It appears both the government of the United States and the financial institutions were, uh, when engaged in banking business, are construed as one and the same entity. They are denying me my right of interest to in the collateral of the United States. 
lawful money. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you have an interest in lawful money because of what the title gives you. But pay attention. United States and the financial institutions, when they are engaged in commercial business, they are one and the same. So when the financial institutions are denying you, they're acting under color and or authority of law. Sorry, just got to understand the knowledge. Either way, since all property is owned by the state, and individual so-called ownership is only by permission from the state, that both the executive branch and the congressional branch of government have intentionally and deliberately committed an unconstitutional act against the people of the United States. And my person, and I must object. Now, well, hold on, we got to do something, because you can't just leave that statement like that. Hold on, we got we to gotta do it this way. Trying to get over. Trying to get over. I, 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 super fly. Yes, always something on my mind. Okay. Nope, it ain't gonna let me do that. Oh, I see what's going on. Hold on, y'all. I hope it don't shut down again. Because it's been doing it. It's been acting kind of flaky. Uh-oh, I think it's gonna shut down. See that right there? Oh, because I'm on the internet again. Yeah, that's what happens when I'm on the internet. Look. I, I ain't got nothing going on right now on the internet. So guess what we're going to do? You want to play with me like that, internet? We're going to... Airplane mode, you mother... That's right. We airplane mode it. Ooh, you mode it? I ain't mode it. Your mama mode it. Your mama mode it. Well, your mama more mode it than my mama. No, your mama more mode it than anybody mama. Why are you talking about my mama? Because your mama is your mama. That's why I'm talking about her. Shoot, tell her to stop being your mama and I talk about somebody else's mama because she won't be your mama, but I'm still going to talk about that, I mean that woman. Sorry about that, y'all. I don't know why he keeps coming in here. I didn't sent him outside. I mean, right now, outside, it's 84 degrees inside, so it ain't that ain't that warm out there today. So he, he just keep coming back up in here like it's hot out there or something. Oh, oh, yeah, I ain't giving him the water or nothing, but, you know, he don't need no water. I got to put y'all on pause because it ain't going to let me do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not my misunderstanding. For the last 20 minutes, I have been trying to get back to editing that document. It will not let me edit anything. It won't let me change anything. It will let me delete, but it will not let me edit the document. So I'm going to have to restart the computer, but I can't do that because I am recording a meeting and I still have to finish that. Um, it's a rendering of the video, so I can't do that. And I don't want to leave y'all on hold like that, even though y'all won't know the difference. I'm about to go fry me some egg sandwiches, egg and cheese sandwiches, because I, I do the egg sandwich thing. You know, I, it's just what I feel like tonight. I don't feel like eating nothing else. Okay, I just, egg, cheese, pepper, man. I, sorry, it's just, I love it. So I do it every once in a while. It's like a little fad for me. So, because I, I had lunch, had a little bit of taste of lunch today. And so I just don't feel like eating nothing else. So I'm about to go make me some egg sandwiches. Just want to let you know that. As soon as I can, tomorrow that document should be finished and it should be up. Okay, I don't see myself making any more additions, but there are some things I did notice, some words that are grouped together that need to be separated. So I have to take care of that before I put it up for you guys. But my hope is that it will be up tomorrow, Thursday. Just like I promised. I, you thought you said it was going to be up by Tuesday. I said, no, I was going to try by Tuesday, but I told you how tired I was and I said I got to do it right. So I'll sit up here and just talk about me and Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going I'm to go put him outside, okay? Y'all have a good day. I hope this was beneficial for some of y'all, knowing what was in the document. I got to go because my battery power is way down. So I got to go. Y'all take care. I'm out of here. Goodbye.